Now for this mission today. Well, it's an exciting one, and uh, Gemini 7, uh, having been up for eight days, has had uh, its share of, uh, well, not serious problems, but the problems of housekeeping. Perhaps uh, Bill Stout, out of the McDonald plant, and our mock-up Gemini spacecraft can tell us what's been going on up there. Bill? Walter, I doubt that I can, but I'm sure that Bob Sharp, a pilot engineer here at McDonald, can tell us all about it. Bob, to begin with, what is the difference between 6, the one going up today, and 7, the one that's been up there? Well, for the housekeeping provisions or the stowage provisions, uh, there are quite a few in that uh, there are added pouches and bags on the side uh, in this area here. There's uh, pouches under the seat uh, for stowage of... Uh, cameras, uh, food packs, what have you. Uh, there are storage provisions underneath the seat that you can't see, which you use for a, uh, essentially a wastebasket. Throw the plastic food containers, things like that in there when they're finished with them. Uh, so with all of that, we, they uh, try and keep the uh, place cleaned up uh, fairly neat to make it a uh, habitable uh, area. Borman and Lovell had said before this one began that they thought the biggest problem wouldn't be technical or mechanical, but just running a neat ship. Yeah, just existing in this uh, pretty tight confines uh, for a spacecraft. The other differences, of course, that you can't see uh, in here, uh, other than just storage provisions, are um, Spacecraft 7 has fuel cells, 6 is using batteries. So on the front panel in this area, our electrical controls and looking at them you don't see very much difference but the uh, operation is considerably different uh, six of course was originally slated to uh, dock with the agena and it has agena controls on the right hand panel that they won't use that's right uh, seven has the radiometric experiment uh, incorporated and so uh, controls for it are in this area of the panel uh, here what and is that radiometric uh, that's to take uh, infrared, ultraviolet measurements of the star, spectral background, and space objects. So they'll be using that experiment uh, during the uh, docking maneuver. Uh, other things are uh, hidden, like the difference in propulsion tanks, things like that that you don't see. Basically, no difference you can see inside the spacecraft, except for this terrible problem of housekeeping trying to stay neat for two weeks in space. And that's it, they're pretty similar. Perhaps that's the biggest problem of all, Walter, neatness after two weeks up there. Yes, it seems rather, rather odd to talk about housekeeping chores in that little uh, telephone booth size space capsule at 185 miles above the Earth whirling along at 17,500 miles an hour. But that's precisely what they are. They were telling me down in uh, Houston uh, the other day that uh, they expect the final housekeeping, the, the positive stowage of all items for the return to Earth to take the uh, Gemini 7 astronauts probably almost uh, 24 hours, almost a day before they're scheduled to land, a week from today, uh, they will begin uh, stowing their gear. Of course, one reason for that is that there is a lift factor, so-called, built into the Gemini spacecraft uh, based on its center of gravity, and unless uh, all of the items are stowed about according to a prearranged plan, that center of gravity can be shifted off just enough to make a difference in that uh, vector of lift, uh, to that, that, that factor of lift, uh, and as the spacecraft comes back into the atmosphere. Also, everything must be well stowed so that nothing is flopping around there, uh, hanging weightless. Uh, they've got to be sure nothing has been put on the side of that spacecraft that hangs there uh, all right during flight in a weightless state. And then suddenly, when they get back into the atmosphere and the gravity forces build, that uh, little package that hangs weightless could suddenly come plopping down on the astronauts uh, with the weight of uh, as much as eight times uh, its own weight. This morning has been a busy one, of course, down at Pad 19, getting ready for the launch of Gemini uh, 6, which uh, should be coming now uh, just about uh, 30 minutes from now. It's T minus 10 minutes and counting with a 25-minute hold. So at uh, 35 minutes until the launch scheduled at 9.54. At the Cape this morning, we can review by uh, tape recording some of the highlights of the morning. 
Uh, Ron Stafford uh, went to breakfast this morning, a small affair. Astronaut Gordon Cooper there, you see, sitting next to pilot Tom Stafford. Of course, the command pilot, Wally Shira. Shira and Cooper are perhaps the closest friends among all the astronauts. Next, the suiting up trailer. Shira is a veteran of the Mercury program, wearing the old style Gemini spacesuit. So Stafford, not the new lightweight versions that you saw last week on Borman and Lovell. There's Stafford making, preparing to make his first space flight. Dave Schumacher of CBS picks up the story. The van now pulling up to launch pad 19. It's a beautiful morning on the Cape. Sun shining, just a few clouds in the sky, a little haze over the ocean. The door opens, and here come the astronauts. Their white spacesuits, the American flags on their left shoulders. Two Annapolis graduates shaking hands with the work crew here. Shira leading the way up the ramp to the elevator, followed by Stafford. Shira, sort of the gung-ho pilot of the old tradition. In fact, his nickname was Ra Ra. Stafford, also a test pilot, a little quieter than Shira. Uh, both men uh, shook hands with just a few of the workmen here. Uh, not quite the send-off that we saw just a week ago with uh, Lovell and Borman, but it's a little earlier this morning. And now as they go up, here is astronaut Alan Shepard to give us a quick rundown on uh, what the uh, two men have been doing this morning. How are they doing, Alan? Well, actually, they've been just about on the same schedule that we've always followed. Everything has been going smoothly with them as it has with the spacecraft and the launch vehicle. And we had a very small group in for breakfast this morning, just Wally and Tom and Gordon Cooper and myself. What were you talking about this morning? We're talking about rendezvous, of all things. <laughs> so uh, there really wasn't very much to do except just review that and, and recheck to be sure that we had everything in order. Yeah, Shepard, you've been in this business longer than anyone else. How close are they going to come? I'd say it's going to be a matter of a few feet. Uh, we really feel, I know Wally and Tom feel, and I echo their feelings, that uh, we really feel very confident that this is going to be just like formation flying in an airplane. And of course, the way you do that is you start out uh, fairly loose until you get the feeling of it. Uh, then as you get the feeling of the control and the, and the problems that are involved, move on in more closely. Even as the astronauts were being inserted into the capsule, mission control was in communication with Germany 7. up of the white room the spacecraft freed for launch we never have quite seen this scene before as the white room is folded around uh, the spacecraft or back away from the spacecraft into the erector which then will be lowered for perhaps the most critical mission so far in man's quest for the moon critical in several ways Rendezvous must be proved out if we are to take the next steps toward the moon, if the Apollo program can really, in every sense of the word, get off the ground. Because unless so we can prove out this rendezvous technique, we do not have the means of getting a man back off the moon after putting him there. The uh, LEM, the Lunar Excursion Module, which has been designed for the Apollo spacecraft, carries two men from the main spacecraft orbiting the moon down to the moon's surface and then back to rendezvous above the moon with the, the spacecraft itself for the return to Earth. So this rendezvous is terribly important. It's also important for other reasons. Uh, if we are to put a manned orbiting laboratory and even a military reconnaissance vessel in space, this is now planned, we have to be able to resupply it. And that requires rendezvous. We have to be able to take men to it and bring them back. It requires rendezvous. And also, there's an important factor that is not very often discussed about rendezvous, but we would like to establish the means for rescue in space. This has not been possible up to now until we find out how we can send a second space ship up after a first and to make contact with it, uh, we cannot uh, achieve rescue in space. So rendezvous is very important for moving the space program on ahead into its next big step. Now this 
rendezvous uh, today does not include uh, the uh, actual meeting of the uh, two ships. They will not touch. It is not planned that they touch, and it is hoped that they do not touch. They do not want damage to either one of these that might impair the success of the mission and endanger the astronauts themselves. Uh, however, they will come within a few feet, as you heard uh, Alan uh, Shepard say there just a moment ago. This is not docking, however. Docking was planned for the Gemini 6 on its October 25th launch, but as you know, the Agena space uh, vehicle, unmanned, that it was to chase and dock with, uh, blew up uh, before achieving orbit, and that mission had to be scrubbed. This is a make-do mission, and in many ways, it is more dramatic and exciting than the first, but it does not include the docking, which also is essential and will not come until Gemini 8, probably uh, around March of next year. We are expecting an announcement now from uh, Cape Kennedy, the uh, second we have heard since we went off the air from uh, Jack King, the uh, voice of uh, Gemini Control until launch. Well, they say now it's going to be another minute before we uh, hear from Jack King. They give us a, a signal from there as to when they expect to come up with an announcement, and sometimes they change signals on us. The count is a T minus three minutes and 30 seconds and counting, but uh, as we told you, in just 30 seconds from now, there should be this automatic hold of 25 minutes. In other words, the count will be suspended at T minus three for 25 minutes, picked up again 25 minutes later at T minus three and on to the count of T minus zero. Uh, the launch at 54 minutes after the hour scheduled. That will be the launch of Gemini 6 for the pursuit of Gemini 7 and rendezvous in space. Now let's see if we can bring in Jack King. This is Gemini launch control at the Cape. We are T minus three minutes and holding. T minus three minutes and holding. This is the plan hold and the duration is expected to be some 25 minutes. We have had a perfect countdown thus far today. And the hold time, the planned hold time, now must all be used up during this period in order to get us off with Gemini 6 at the correct time for the rendezvous maneuver. The flight director, Mr. Chris Kraft, has just notified the launch pad that the liftoff time will be the same as he reported earlier. And that is 9.54 and 6 seconds a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are now holding at Launch Complex 19. Everything's still going excellently at the present time. This is Gemini Launch Control. CBS News coverage of Gemini 7 will continue in a moment.